in a bigger picture for the WNBA, and really even bigger than that, Becky Hammond, her first year with the Aces, coach of the year. We know she coached under Papa in San Antonio. She's always been the name on the tip of everybody's tongue as going to be the first woman head coach in the NBA. So while she comes into the WNBA and is phenomenal right out, out of the gate, which I don't think surprised a lot of people, do we still hear talk in the WNBA circles that she is someone that can that can move up to the, the NBA level and be a head coach? Oh, for sure. I think Becky had options, right? And she made a choice to help elevate the W and make her presence felt like Bill Lambeer left a great legacy with the Aces and they had a great run. But Becky saw an opportunity, Mike, to take them over the top, looked at the roster. It's a championship made roster, as we've come to find out, as you said, the favorite for most of the season right up there at the top for most of the year with Chicago, as far as the odds go over on the DraftKings Sportsbook. And then um, yeah, just they've, they've got a sense of unfinished business too. Asia Wilson wins the MVP, has been in big spots. Kelsey Plum has been challenged by Becky Hammond telling Kelsey all year, you want to be the best point guard in the league? You got to go out there and be a killer there at the end of games. And, and the narrative too in these, in these WNBA finals is Kurt Miller coached Becky Hammond. So there's a great little uh, battle there going back to their playing and coaching days in the, in the college level. But Becky, I think Becky's track record already speaks for itself. If yeah, she signed a massive deal with Vegas, I don't think she's going anywhere, but really, really admirable that she took the job and she's trying to elevate these women and she's handled it like she won coach of the year and didn't make it a big deal. She, she made it about the team and that she's trying to do what a lot of folks, Mike, are trying to do in this league and that's elevate the players. And that's what I give Becky so much credit for. So overall, and Jess, I guess I'll ask you as as well in this, for the W, I mean, to have Becky Hammond in there is obviously huge. Do you want to see her go to the NBA, or would you like her to stay in the W and, and keep keep that building block going? Yeah, well, I, I don't really necessarily think we should consider, like, the WNBA job as being a second-tier job because she's coaching some of the best basketball players in, in the country, in the world, at what at what they do. And so I think that – it's awesome that she's their coach and I don't necessarily, it's just always disappointing when someone's successful either as like a, a woman's college coach or a WNBA coach to be like, well, there's always one more step. Mm. I will say the counter to that is that you can make more money in the NBA or as a men's head basketball coach um, because we just value men's sports more. And Brendan, I'm not trying to like, you know, uh, this isn't a criticism of you. It's just naturally what we kind of turn these conversations into when we see someone be really successful coaching one of these teams. So I'm, I'm happy that she's coaching the aces. She's done a really good job and it'd be, it'd be cool to see her build a dynasty there. Yeah. I, I only use the word admirable Jessica because she, she I'm using the coach of the year award as an example. She didn't make it about her. She's trying to elevate these players need their platforms to be risen. Like the marketing of these players as individuals. You see John Quell Jones, the, the Connecticut reigning MVP on the state farm commercial. We see Sue Bird plenty in, in commercials. Sylvia Fowles just retired. Those have been great individual stories of all time greats. But the question now for the WNBA, how do you elevate the next wave of young superstars? Mike, you know Jack, you know, Jackie Young, Arike Gumbawale coming out of Notre Dame. Those are great players. Arike's in in Texas. They play in Arlington. And and that's look, I love the Dallas Wings. They're they're great people, but how do we get more folks excited about Arike? In Dallas, she's she's a big part of what they're doing. I think Becky, it's admirable that she's made it about the players. And it's not to say that she could have, I'm not trying to make it sound like it's a step back coaching the Aces as opposed to the Blazers, for example, when she was in the running for that job. But it's mm -hmm. admirable that she understands what kind of weight and what kind of meaning she could have on the league. Yeah, and yeah. listen, I, I'm Jess, I'm with you. These are the best, it is the professional ranks. These are the best players in the world. So I completely get what you're saying. But every time we talk to somebody from the W, it is, they do talk about, okay, what's next? How do we get more visible? Yeah. How, does, oh, how does marketing improve more? Mm -hmm. Certainly Becky being there is going to help. But I guess for, for both of you and Brennan, we can start with you. What, what can be next for them? Next for the, next for the, the league, the, the, the next. Yeah. Step and, and, and to take that next step. 
Yeah, I think win winning titles is is helpful and being on the biggest stage at the end. I, I will say this. I, I really wish there was a way that the W could have found a way to not compete with the NFL uh, in these WNBA finals. That would be a criticism of mine to, to figure out how to. Now, tonight, uh, Tuesday night, we're again over recording after, but Tuesday you avoid that problem. But having Sunday, Thursday, Sunday in these finals is not ideal. Right. Um, but the, the, the next step, I think it, it's, it sounds corny. It sounds silly. Um, but telling people to go to games and the attendance at these Vegas games have been fantastic. I plan on going to the Mohegan on Thursday and Sunday. Sunday's already more sold out than Thursday and there's in Sundays, no guarantee because it's a game four, it's a best of five series, but continuing f encourage folks to go to games and actually consume the product. TV deals are certainly important in sports. I realize that to help elevate not only um, the, the, the player contracts, you know, Becky, you know, Becky's contract, player contracts. That's a big step too to pay these women as they should be, and that and that brings up the conversation of overseas play and how the CBA looks going into next year. That players have to make a choice if they have more than two years of service time. They've got to make a choice between the W and their overseas commitments. They have to be on time for training camp. It feels like that can be maneuvered a bit, but that. That's important, like making sure that they can also still make their living overseas. But also, if you're going to make them come and play and prioritize training camp in your season, the WNBA will compensate properly, get the TV deal uh, st straightened out and, and strengthen that. But also just getting more folks to go to games um, in markets that might not be as strong. Seattle's going to be fine, I think. New the New York Liberty have done really well with Sabrina Ionescu in the league. That's for sure. Can Minnesota find the next piece? I'm just using examples. Um, and Connecticut's done well, too, over the years. They've done a really good job at home court. So just encouraging more folks to go.